Welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we'll be taking a look at webOS open source edition. So the developers of webOS decided to create an open source separate open source edition for the operating system and webOS is LG's um, smart TV operating system that they use. It has its, um, its kind of history or family background from PalmOS uh, as far as I can remember and it kind of just went on from there to become webOS and then finally uh, webOS open source edition. There has been uh, Leon OS previously which I looked at which was a separate project of open webOS. So yes, webOS has a lot of branches uh, and I tried out Loon OS on Raspberry Pi 3 and then I actually um, kind of get bored of uh, doing everything on the Raspberry Pi. So uh, the the open webOS project initially, the webOS open source edition project initially started with support for, for only Raspberry Pi 3, but recently they have added generic uh, support for x86. That means you can build an emulator. I have not tested it on bare metal as of now, but uh, I mean, it, it looks promising and um, in the future, if I get a chance to, you know, build something that boots on bare metal um, Mesa based driver, I think it's still running Mesa. But uh, if it boots on bare metal, then we can try it on a bunch of different boards and uh, things like that and try to tweak everything. I think uh, the Raspberry Pi specific things that were in there have been made a bit more generic. Um, so yeah, so this is just a first look at what there is. So currently running uh, Ubuntu 16.04. Uh, so 16.04 and I think I am running this on an i3. Uh, so I think uh, the, the, the way you get started is you have uh, set up scripts to get your webOS image up and running. Uh, and you compile the OS imagery yourself. It's a Yocto based compile or open embedded, whichever you want you prefer. Uh, once that's done, you get the uh, webOS.vmdk and that is something that you boot. So they have their custom uh, emulator executable, which is again based on QEMO. Actually, it is exactly QEMO. Uh, for some reason, it's still not x86-64. Uh, their site just says that it builds for 586, it's our 686 platform, so it's x86. Uh, I think it uses the system i386 uh, QEMO1, uh, not sure on that. But anyways, let's go and get started. So all I have to do, press enter, uh, boots up pretty easily, ask for my password, uh, that's fine. And then it boots up to this. Uh, grubbish kind of thing uh, i think that's grub one i don't know why they aren't up to grub two yet but whatever it, it's booting in the background you can see and it straight up goes full screen but somehow it's just shy of uh, of 1080p but in in reality it's actually kind of running at 1080p you can see how the text is uh, badly scaled down looks uh, at the logo here so it's not running at the full resolution, but the QEMO window doesn't actually go proper full screen. So th those are all the issues there um, still are. So my first instant was to, you know, go and click my mouse a few places here and there and nothing happened. And I left uh, this running as is. And to be honest, it was really by accident that I discovered the first thing you have to do is press the super key or the windows key and that actually brings up this short menu full of um, experimental like apps and stuff so these are all web-based apps uh, running on uh, their own web kit uh, but that's the settings uh, you don't get much you can change the language um, to whatever you like i'll keep that at english um, and then you can change the keyboard input language uh, can change date and time system information just gives you uh, you know it's version one whatever um, 
yeah so on the network side of things device name is you can set that up network connection is ethernet and then wi-fi is connected because i'm running off a uh, virtual emulator so let's go back everything is based on keyboard you can use um, the mouse as well but i find find it easier to use on keyboard which is actually pretty good if you are using um uh, if you're using it on your tv and have a, like a small little keyboard they do uh, so bear app is the the first one here um it doesn't do anything because that's basically the wallpaper app and then we have youtube now youtube is interesting because they're just going to the youtube tv website um yeah the youtube window page isn't very appetizing um and i seem to have frozen it okay let's uh let's give it another go all right let's go give it another so you do have to like compile your own kvm and your uh virtual gl uh, library for this to work in full screen mode uh, and I tried it with Fedora, didn't go that well. So it seems to be pretty locked down to Ubuntu only. Um, so again, YouTube, let's play back something before it crashes again. Let's go to the search, I'll uh, search for myself. Few videos come up. Let's let's see the one with Charbax in it. I think it's Charbax video. Um, yeah, that's Michael Welling there and Mani. Um, it was playing the last time I tried, but right now it just seems to be kind of stuck for some reason. Yeah. Let's try this one. And that's a weird ad or something. Um, I can I can fairly show you it was working some time ago. Um, it just seems that something has gone awfully wrong right now. The internet is working, so I mean, just it just shows the first frames, first few frames, and then uh, sleeps or something. Let's try one more from some other uploader. Um, I guess it's the same thing. The first frame and it's done. So we can go back actually from here. Uh, the bear app is the wallpaper app. Enact is sort of the um, interface that these guys are using. So I think it crashed again. Let's, uh, okay, so capture. Let's try the Enact app app once again so again it, this just opens up their website so it's not really an app but yeah uh, web based app uh, you can build app on top of react framework and that's about it so the text looks weird because it's not going proper full screen um, and I don't know why that's happening and even I'm not even sure if they have fixed it yet because it's been a fairly long time since I have built it and since I'm recording this video and uh, when it will be uploaded. So, yeah. So, this is uh, the next one is just WebOS OSEs open uh, their own uh, website. So, WebOS open source edition getting started, blah blah blah. and all the good stuff so you can actually go into setting up or let's go into getting started and here you can see inside it freeze again yep it froze again and here if you go into SDK tools you go into emulator and here you can see the page for QEMO x86 emulator so yeah it's it's not in the setting up part it's uh, setting up part it's still fairly raspberry pi only but it's in the um in the not so setting up part it's in the sdk or simulator part or emulator part actually um which is kind of fine but 
I mean, I'd be happy if it was in the setting apart as well. Uh, because I came to know it through a tweet, uh, even though I was looking at this web page earlier the same day, uh, I was looking into the setting up bit, which was still Raspberry Pi only, and I see this tweet and I go, okay. Um, so looks like we have crashed once again, um, looking from wow, uh, a bunch of other things. It is, seems to be the virtual GPU bit. Um, yeah, again, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one because I really enjoyed making it um, after a long time. Uh, there has been a few OS's in the making that are looking very interesting to play around with. You know, the last one was Fuchsia and that kind of blew up uh, because I don't have $1,500 to spare and run it on an actual hardware. Um, but with that said, more uh, exciting videos to come. I have a few of them prepared which are very different. Um, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out my social media as well because that seems to be a thing these days and um, you will get a lot of updates there if I don't upload regularly, which I've been trying to but uh, doesn't really work. So uh, once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.